From a distant galaxy to your personal computer. A third webinar with Andromedan contactee Alex Collier. October the 23rd, 2015. In this webinar, Alex will be talking about current events, off-world news, especially regarding the Dwarf Star, assistance from ET in building bridges of transition for humanity, why Mars now, migration of the soul, according to the Andromeda, and the stages of soul growth. Book now for this third contact from our friends in Andromeda. Go to www.alexcollier.org. Spirit.tv and I'm trying to do without very much further ado you know who he is um, please settle down get your cup of tea ready and uh, relax and here's Alex Collier good afternoon Alex how are you doing hi JP thank you well, James thank you everyone who's on today thank you very much for um, for attending um, I really really appreciate your support um, so good evening Good afternoon, good morning, because we are around the world. Um, we have a lot to talk about today, and um, we're definitely going to try to get to the questions at the end, and um, we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. So um, we're going to we're going to kind of do this in stages. We're going to we're going to start with some current events, and we're going to kind of jump around until we get to um, the soul's journey which is what we talked about last last webinar and, um, and then we'll close you know for years and years and years many of the things that more names say has talked about it I didn't know what to do with the information um, I just simply didn't know I didn't know where it fit but I always knew that there was a reason that they would share information. And, you know, really the last couple of years, I kind of see where things start to fit. Um, especially their information regarding who we are and our ability to not only create our reality, but also, you know, our, our dimensional lineage. And um, when we get to the soul's journey, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But, you know, let's talk about current events. Um, I'm going to start with the financial system. I've had a lot of questions about it. Um, I've been watching what's been going on as well. And I know that there is a, a great deal of information uh, on the Internet regarding revalued currencies um, and a new financial system. Well, that is obviously and clearly um, happening. There, there clearly is a, a very strong possibility that a, a new financial system or a um, very upgraded financial system is being created and is being implemented despite the control and manipulation of uh, the old world, okay? So, um, one of the large and major indicators of this, which is interesting, this is not public knowledge, is that seven to nine of the world's largest hedge funds have closed. And what they're doing is, is they're putting all their attention into buying metals, gold, silver, platinum, iridium, other things like that. And it's very, very quiet. It's very hush. Uh, this is not something that has happened to my knowledge before where the largest have just pulled out of the system very quietly and are going in a, in a different direction. But that is in fact happening. Now when you hear about uh, currencies going to an asset based, that, is, that, that appears to be absolutely accurate based on what I've been able to research and those that I've been able to talk to. And for the most part, this is a really good thing. 
Um, I think the, one of the largest mistakes the United States ever made was allowing the dollar to go off the gold standard, even though that was entirely political and it was done for completely manipulative means. Um, it was still a mistake because um, when those chickens come home to roost, we're going to need a bigger roost. Okay, it's going to be ugly, um, especially for us here in the states or for you in England, the colonies. Um, so there are currencies that look like they're going to revalue or reinstate an older currency value, which of course is much higher than what it is now. Um, I am not a legal expert uh, or a financial, a licensed financial expert. I am just sharing with you my perspective. And for those of you who are paying attention, um, there is apparently an enormous amount of pressure to get this to happen sooner than later. Um, I know that there are enormous swings of emotions, which even I experience, um, between very feeling very positive and then feeling very helpless. I want you to know that that swing of emotions is all being done on purpose. Okay, because it's creating focus on them. And they, of course, are just sapping up and lap, lapping up this energy. Okay, and they're doing it on purpose. They, you know, when, when they create a scenario that is trying to make everyone feel, feeling, feel helpless, um, they know they have your attention. Um, so, you know, maybe there's more that we can do to take several steps back and become more uh, observational, become more the observer, even though I know many are having a very, very difficult time. I think the focus needs to be more on what you can do today and not waiting for it to come in the future. Um, because if you stay in the present, that's where you're creating your current and present reality. And when I say this to you, I'm, I'm looking at myself as well. Okay. So, um, and this gives them less power over us. And uh, I am absolutely all for that. <laughs> absolutely all for that. Um, in politics, you know, on the surface, it looks like the biggest cluster F there ever was. Um, but I go back to something that uh, Roosevelt once said, and I believe Churchill said something almost similar, that nothing in politics happens by accident, that much of it is by design. And, um, you know, again, I would say, you know, be the observer. And we've talked about this in previous webinars, about being the observer and watching this circus um, where you have these grown men, these grown women, these governments acting as if they haven't got a single lick of common sense, nor have even heard the word. Okay, um, there's obviously a lot more to that. Um, but if we don't emotionally buy into that, again, we stay in the present, we become the observer, and we can focus on what we can do for ourselves today, to create today, to create tomorrow and um, not put it in the hands of someone else, which is really never a good idea. Okay. Um, there have been some emails regarding Mars. Why is it that NASA suddenly wants to go to Mars? <laughs> well, if you've been paying attention to the secret soldier information, and you obviously know we've, we're already there. and We've been there for some time. Um, I would say to you folks to focus your studies on Gale Crater, G-A-L-E. And the reason I say Gale is when we first went there, inside this crater, which is fairly large, they had already found the ruins of a city. What's interesting is that the previous inhabitants who appeared to have been there 
tens of thousands of years ago were not all that different from we are now. And many of the life support systems were already there. Uh, it's it's built uh, at the underneath that aquifer is a very large um, underneath that crater is a very large aquifer. It had a plumbing system. Uh, it had uh, the ability to draw the water from wells from this aquifer all over the city. Um, it also had uh, forms of electricity, uh, generation power that was still operational. Uh, all they had to do essentially was clear away some of the debris, and it was. Re almost ready-made habitable. Some upgrades obviously had to have been made. These have been, and from what I told, I'm told that that's one of the largest colonies that we have on Mars. And that's where most of, it's one of the most comfortable um, colonies we have on Mars. Okay, that is Gale Crater. Also, there's been a, um, some emails regarding bases here on Earth. As a general rule, these underground facilities are built within several miles of very large underground aquifers. And again, it's because of the water. Okay? Now, even the aliens who share specific underground facilities, many of their particular life forms or some of their particular life forms, um, use water on some level. And what would and, and the way these bases were built is that water would go to specific tanks where they could add specific minerals, they could um, pH the water to to a degree where it assists them that it's good for their body type. Now some of the races, the alkalinity needs to be absolutely through the roof. And some of them, there can be almost no alkalinity. Um, and their body types use very specific minerals. So this would have, this affords them the ability to have th those particular needs met. Um, as far as the human element, it's exactly the same thing. Um, you know, for hygiene, personal hygiene, uh, for uh, health, etc. So that's the general rule. So if you want to know where most of the bases are located, do the research on underground aquifers, and you will find the areas um, that will be within several miles of those aquifers is where you will find our underground facilities. And um, underground aquifers are all over the planet, just so you know as a general rule of thumb. Um, let's see what else. Going through my notes here. I know, or I expect, I expect, let me put it that way, I expect that this is a time of great uncertainty for a lot of people. And it's and it's it's clearly understandable. Um, you have the religious right and the religious left saying, you know, preparing for the end of the world. You have um, climatologists saying that this is the end of the world because of climate change. You have governments saying that um, this is the end of the financial system. The world as we know it, the entire financial world is going to collapse. The common thread here is that it's all creating fear. And what does fear do? It lowers your frequency. And that's the game here, folks. Okay, That's the game that has always been the game of making people, the populace, feel helpless and hopeless. It is to put you in a space of fear, to put you in this position that you are focused on them fixing it. Now when you want to create a reality, a dream, a vision for yourself, and many of you I know have done this, when you want to create a reality for yourself, you focus your intent 
on what it is that you want. Okay? To continue to do that every day can be a lot of work, at least in the beginning. It takes a lot of discipline to continue to focus on what it is that you want. It's easy to just give your power away to these beings and have them take your focus, your energy, and bring you all over the place, back and forth, back and forth, creating this friction, which of course creates emotional energy, which is of course what they feed off of. Now this is obviously not the first time I've talked about it, and I know that there are others who have talked about it. Okay? But it's clearly happening. Okay? And if you can, if we can all take ourselves out of this trauma and become the observers, we can see what's really going on here. And the reason for becoming the observer is that you clearly see the game that's being played in front of you. And once you know what the game is, you know you empower yourself, number one, and number two, you can make better choices about what it is that you want. They want the powers that be, and I include the Orion Group and the Consortium and all of this, they want us, they want our, our attention, our focus, because when we're focused, when our attention is in survival, when it's giving them our power, we are giving them literally the energy to create a reality they want for us. And folks, they're not our friends. If they were our friends, we would have been we would not be in this place. Okay? We would have God. We would be in the stars doing a hell of a lot more than we are trying to survive here on nickels and dimes. It's just okay, I don't need to beat that horse. You guys already know that. Okay. It's really time to pay attention, and it's really time to invest your energy in you, okay, in creating your dream, and what it is that you want. There just isn't any, there, there can't be any more excuses. I, I mean, I, you know, I know you may have two jobs. I know you may have three or four children. You may be a single parent. You may be living in a car. You know, we all have to do this work. There's just no way we don't have 10 or 15 minutes a day to just focus on what it is that we really, really want. Okay? Um, it has to happen. You have to invest this time in yourselves now, especially now, um, because the frequency is changing. And this is why we're all getting the full court press into fear. Okay? The frequency, that the, the area around the planet, around the entire solar system, this plasma field has a very high intense energy, and it directly will reflect back our consciousness. Okay? Now, if we're positive thinking, it will create a positive field around the Earth and around the solar system. If we are negative field, all hell will break loose. It'll be all this shit we don't want. Okay? Because that's where we're at. And this is why we are getting the full court press. If we create this negative field around us, and we're moving into this very intense reflective field of energy, okay, what we don't want is what we're going to draw to us. Okay? That's why we need to be focusing on what it is we do want. And when you become the observer, you clearly know what you want because you see the game being played out in front of you. And we can spend more time on this in the next webinar. Um, but it's really important because this is really, really happening. And, you know, many people 
they're still putting their faith in the mainstream media they're putting their faith in the scientists to tell us exactly what's going on you have to understand these are all controlled and they always have been this is why it's so important to empower yourself okay now having said that we're going to go to I'm going to go to my notes here and we are going to talk about the journey of the soul now when I was first given this information I, I truly didn't know what to do with it and, and I have revisited it over and over again um, throughout the years and every time I do I get more and more out of it because I begin to identify with what they were talking about now what's interesting is that this is the fifth density Andromedans from Zenite this is their perspective on their soul's journey now what's interesting is that it isn't all that different than ours okay there are such remarkable similarities between all beings of soul interdimensional beings of soul let me preface that again interdimensional that it, it literally appears to be one size fits all okay I think the only difference is the level of physicality that we choose um, clearly third density is, is boot camp There's no question about it okay uh, fourth density upper fourth density is obviously easier um, and assimilation and manifestation is quicker and then in fifth density compared to third density would be a cakewalk okay but anyway what we're going to do is we're going to get into this um, and I have numbered them the way that, that they were given to me and that's typically what the, you know what Mornay and Phaseus would do is they would give me things in order um, the way that I was, I, was, I was to register them or to memorize them okay the first stating one's intention creating and acknowledging your purpose to leave timelessness I will do this slow so that in case some of you want to read write these down you can do so okay and I'll, what I'll do is I'll read each one of these twice okay the first is stating one's intention creating and acknowledging your purpose to leave timelessness initiation preparing your soul yourself purifying and centering your being initiation preparing your soul yourself purifying and centering your being three surrendering letting go of control allowing yourself to be vulnerable leaving behind what it is you know Number three, surrendering, letting go of control, allowing vulnerability, leaving behind what is known. Number four is embracing the physical form, whatever form that is, walking into the unknown. Number four, embracing the physical form, whatever that is, walking into the unknown. Okay, number five, wandering in time. The soul, through experience, 
gathers its tools of transformation. Number five, wandering in time. The, the soul, through experience, gathers its tools of transformation. Becoming the light or the flame. Consciously connecting with the spirit of all that is. Becoming truly responsible in meaningful relationships and discovering and becoming empathy. Okay, number six, becoming the light or the flame. Consciously connecting with the spirit. Becoming truly responsible in meaningful relationships. Discovering and becoming empathy. Number seven, learning to be of service. Being able to truly see through the illusions of separateness. Being humility and joy and teaching by being. Learning to be of service. Being able to truly see through the illusions of separateness. Being humility and joy. Teaching by being. And eight, transformation. Observing, listening, being still, all in silence. Creating the being that is one and changing your vision of self that alters all perception. Okay, I'll read the last one again. Transformation. Observing, listening, being, still, all in silence. Creating the being that is one and changing your vision of self that alters all perception. Now these, these steps, everyone will relate to in different ways. And there are maybe many new people who are listening to this going, what? <laughs> um, only because I had, they're in the process of beginning to look at themselves in a different way. Um, for some of us who are vintage in this field, um, you know, we've earned our stripes. We've, we've earned our medals and our merit badges. Um, what you can do is in your own way share this with people that you talk to who are opening up, coming into their own, and you can begin mentoring them with your knowledge and your experience of what's going on. Um, Because it, it, everything is, is, is changing. And I think, on, I think on most levels, multiple levels, people know. They, they sense something very strange is happening, something very different is going on. And they, they're not sure what to do um, because they're not getting any answers um, from mainstream anything. And and they're going to be turning to you guys for guidance. Um, it's imperative that if you don't know, you let them know you don't know. But it's important to at least give them a direction to look. Um, you know the old... Uh, the old story about uh, teaching, teaching the guy to fish. You know, once he learns to fish, once he knows where to look for his answers, once he has a perspective in which to look at things, he can or she can um, begin to do the work for themselves. And in that process of discovery, um, 
they they rediscover themselves from the inside out. And of course, this is extremely important with our young people today. Um, there are many young people who are asking a lot of really fantastic questions. Um, they also have, um, they're also looking at the system that we grew up in and saying, this is screwed. You know, this is messed up. And, and they're right. But they're in a space of frustration and anger with it and um, hostility. We need to try to channel that energy of hostility and anger um, and turn it back on themselves to help them find their answers about how to fix this, to come up with new ideas. Because these kids, once the ex... Okay, once this whole um, this reality that was created for us by the aggressive aliens with our assistance, with our with our absolutely with our assistance, once it collapses and it is seen for what it is, and we have a clear vision of an alternative that truly works for everybody, regardless of race, creed, or culture. These, the younger generations, the next three or four younger generations, that will be mentored by the positive um, extraterrestrial groups. They're the ones who are going to radically, radically change our galaxy. Not alone. There are other star systems that are participating in this. But, but what we can do is just focus on what we need to do here. Okay, our backyard, our home planet, um, our DNA strand, strands, okay, what we need to do is just focus on what we have to do right here and now. So we have to we have to look out that far. Um, you know, the Native Americans used to have a, a a fabulous tradition, and I don't know if they still practice this, but whenever they would sit down to make a decision that would change their tribe, they would look out seven or eight generations and they would try to anticipate what their decisions would look like seven or eight generations out what would be the outcome what would be the consequences going out that far we've lost that and we somehow need to get that back. We desperately need, as a culture, even just as uh, beginning with, with individuals and families, is to, you know, look at how is this going to set up, you know, seven or eight generations. Uh, here's, a, here's a good example. Those who are waiting on the global monetary reset, Many of you will be coming into great wealth. Here's a, here's a great opportunity to practice this. The decisions that you make once you have this wealth, whether it's setting up trusts, um, setting up nonprofits, whatever it is that you're doing, try to, to take it out seven or eight generations. Uh, with your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, try to take it out six, seven generations and just see what that looks like. If, if we don't think about it, if we don't project ourselves out in that way, we'll never know just how much we're capable of. And, you know, this is kind of where humanity finds itself. 
I mean, we're, we're, we're taking a leap here, a huge leap of, of faith in the sense that we're, we're, we are spiritually reaching out, pulling in the energy of higher dimensions. Those of us who are consciously doing it, we are literally pulling in the energy. We are willing higher dimensions, positive spiritual information, energy. We are willing it to come down into third density. Okay? And it's working. It is definitely working. It's almost, if you were to read about time travel, that many of the extraterrestrial groups have talked about where they talk about folding space. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we're doing. We are folding space. We are taking a higher frequency, and it is no different than going from point A to point B. We are taking a higher frequency, and we are pulling it down, and we are reaching up to it. We are creating that same link. Okay? We are bringing those two spaces together. It's just that they're frequencies. They are not locations. Okay? Big difference. And if we can do that, we can do anything. Absolutely anything. And you have to know that. that we are capable of doing anything. So that's what's happening. You know, we also know that the knuckleheads um, playing with CERN, they're trying to bring in lower fourth density, which is very negative. They're trying to bring that into third density. And you got to wonder what they're thinking, you know. Um, and you have to wonder what they've been told, uh, why they would even consider doing this. Um, they've clearly drank the Kool-Aid. And they have, and, and, and I want to believe that they have no idea what they're really doing. But, you know, once you open that door, um, things obviously get quite more interesting. Um, but but that, that's what's going on here. Um, it's, it's like creating another domain of knowing, which is what the A's talked about many, many years ago uh, when it came to individual rights. Um, uh, in personal liberties, guaranteed personal liberties that were recognized uh, that all living sentient beings had. Okay? Now, this is just another way of showing you or highlighting to you the power that we have as interdimensional beings. And it's imperative that, that you truly, I, I wish I could just make everyone grasp this point. We are calling fifth density down to us. Our knowledge, our wanting, our uh, intent, our declared intent to bring down positive spiritual information from higher densities is coming. To And it's working. You, we all can do that for ourselves. We can all, once we've clearly defined what it is we want, and focus on it with our intention. I intend for this to happen now, or in two weeks, or in a year. I intend this to happen. And every day, you visualize and you picture this event that you're in, intending to happen. The universe has to respond in a positive way. Okay? And it will. You know, many of the ancient sun worshippers knew this technique. And it's interesting that they knew it, and then religions come along and totally make fun of sun worshippers. But it had nothing to do with worshipping the sun as a god. They understood that it was a generator of energy. They knew this. And what they would do is they would use the sun in their prayer work 
to send out the frequency of what they were intending. FYI. Okay. Hey guys, can we take a three minute break for a second? Okay. Thank you, folks. Um, <clears throat> it's time. Now, I realize I'm talking to a small group of people here, um, at least live. But, you know, because of the Internet, these webinars and lectures that many others are doing on similar topics, they have a life of their own. And um, it's a good thing because, you know, people who are searching can find information now where 20 years ago when 25 years ago when many of us started this this path walking this path ourselves you know there wasn't an internet how we barely even had a cell phone then so um, so this is good and what is ready to happen now very much like with the creation of the United States is a break from the past and we're, we're seeing this again it is a time where humanity is needs to break away from the past system because the system that we've all been living under and we are still currently living under um, is archaic um, it's despotic, it can be very tyrannical, and above all, it is suppressing. And we need to be done with that. We really need to be done with that. They need to let us go. And it, 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 what needs to happen now is we need to break away from the past. We need to come up with entirely new ideas of economics. Um, with new ideas of energy, which you know we know are out there already, but that's not to say that you know the best ideas have have even come to fruition yet, or have even been thought of yet, because I don't believe they have been. Um, and again, we're getting help. We know that not only the universe. But benevolent extraterrestrial groups are responding to our calls for help. Okay? There are thousands and thousands of starships in our galaxy alone. I mean, in our solar system alone. And I'm not kidding. I am absolutely not kidding. Okay? They're not here for a picnic. They're not here for a drive-in theater. Okay? Um... They're here to help, and we need to continue to engage their assistance, this frequency of freedom, liberation, self-responsibility, spiritual evolution. I am not talking about religious evolution. I am talking about personal spiritual enlightenment, and I'm talking about the rights of everyone to pursue joy and happiness without infringing on anyone else. Okay. I mean, we've covered a lot. Um, during the three-minute break, um, the soul's journey, some folks wanted that and they couldn't get it all down. When the, when the webinar is over, give me a couple of hours, and I will send this to James, and James will put it up on the, uh, on the site, or he will just email it to you. It's at his discretion how he wants to do this. Okay? Um, 
Folks, we talked about a lot of stuff, and I planted a lot of seeds. That was really the intention. The intention was not to give you all the answers, because I don't have all the answers. Um, I just don't. And uh, but the, a great deal of transformation is occurring, and. It's important that we see it as positive. It really is. Um, because it's, again, you know, what we've been saying through several webinars now. You know, we know what we don't want, and we need to focus and intend on what we do want. And we need to pull that to us. I mean, look at how we've easily pulled everything we don't want to us. We have the same power to create just the opposite, which is what we do want. We just have to believe in ourselves to do it, okay? And dedicate the time to change our thinking, to shift the thinking just a little bit, okay? To positive personal growth and spiritual uh, liberation. To use those words. Now, um, we find ourselves with 40 minutes to do Q and A. So. JP, are, are you ready for that? Because I know we always run short on oh, yeah. the rest of us. Okay. Let's, uh, with, no, with no ado whatsoever, from Lauren. Did the Andromedans or any other benevolent race, by the way, thank you, <laughs> have anything to do with the failure of the Large Hadron Collider at CERN? So uh, was, was it ET inf in interference, uh, as, as you know, I don't know. Okay. I cannot specifically say whether it was the ACE. Um, Specifically, I don't have that information, but were benevolence involved? Absolutely. They have said, and they have told them all along, there's no way you're opening this door. <laughs> okay. okay, because we're, you know, our scientists are like a little child playing with a tank of gasoline. Okay, their curiosity is commendable. Their ability to build technology is commendable, but their logic is uh, flawed. In the true words of Seven of Nine, from Michael, at which point will Planet X be visible in the United States? Uh, well, right now it is still behind the sun. It has been behind the sun for quite some time. The rumors have it sometime mid towards the end of December um, based on projected trajectory any time after Decem December 17th, some say. I will keep you posted on that. Thank you. From Maya, are the draconians who eat children in 3D flesh our physical reality or are they in different dimension? I am still confused. Thanks, Alex. They are both. They are both. Okay. From Dotty. Did the A's ask Alex if he wanted to see his soul? Next question. I'm not going there. Okay. Great question. Really great question. Really great question. Indeed, indeed. Uh, maybe a little too personal at this point. Right. What, this is from Kelly. What is the one thing you'd like to share that has been told to you that you haven't shared or allowed to share? Well, would you want to share it right now? Anyway, you never know. It might be, might be too late for something, you know. Well, I still don't want to share it. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. All right. This is from Luca. Can Alex talk about the Nordics and where they're from? Uh, not specifically, because they're they're from all over the galaxy. Uh, you know what we've done here on Earth is we've just, which is what we tend to do, is we just tend to, you know, if we don't understand something, we kind of lump it all together in one place, and and give it a name. Um, but you know, the Nordics would be anyone who is in in what we would consider human form. Um, but they're from all over the galaxy. Uh, some from fourth density, some from fifth density. Um, 
you know, technically the, the Nordics would be the A's. If, if the, the classic definition, with the, with the exception of air, they would be, you know, they would fall into the classic definition. Um, so uh, they're from all over. They're from all over. Some are even third density extraterrestrial forms. Okay, now that's not a simple answer. It's just they're uh, from all over. Yeah. Is, so it's like that Nordics is what people grow into or become in a certain stage of evolution sort of thing? Well, people choose the physical form they want. If you go back, you know, people choose. And in choosing the form, you choose a specific path. Uh, you, you, when the soul comes into a physical body, and this is how it's been explained to me, depending upon the form, the physical form you take, whether it's third, fourth, fifth, um, and I assume six because there's physicalities in all these dimensions. When the soul enters a physical form, it inherits the DNA um, heraldy, the lineage of that race, and the knowledge that that physicality also carries with it, the journeys of its forebearers, uh, the lineage of the direct family that you've incarnated in, um, as well as whatever social standard you find yourself in within that physical culture, you know, also puts you on a journey. So um, it is not just slam, bam, hey, I'm going to be a gray for one life, and then, hey, you know, I might be a reptilian in the next, and then I'm going to be a human being. I mean, it could literally be that simple. Um, but not all of these forms can accept soul. Some of these life forms in our galaxy and in other parts of the, of, of the universe are AI. They can't hold soul. Okay? So, and you know, I'll write that down. Maybe that's something we can talk about in the next webinar. Okay, that's a great question. That is, and we've got another one that is coming up from uh, an Alexander. Okay. Okay. Since an appreciative percentage of the Patal are now present and acting upon the Terran plane, please provide some perspective as to the role that these divine energies test driving physicality has played in the forging of the universe as we currently understand it. Well, that's a $64,000 question, isn't it? Yeah, at least uh, 64, maybe a little bit more with inflation. Um, if you look at the idea that the Patal are from the 11th density and they have fallen all the way back through the dimensions, all the way down to hit the floor, then you would have to presume that they've had an influence on the way up, on the way down, and back on the way up. So you would have to say they've obviously um, made an impression and left um, a lineage of knowledge, a base of knowledge and experience for everyone to tap into. That's what you would have to assume. Now at the Patal party, when this is all over with, I'll meet whoever that is at the bar. Let's have a drink, and we'll talk about it. <laughs> I'm, kidding, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. There is no Romulan ale on the density, I'm sure. So, uh, Lovely. All right. So here, here we have a, a question from Penny, who can't wrap her mind around the civilization of the Andromedans. Can you describe a day in the life of the A's? How do they manage without money or a medium of exchange? How do you buy a new pair of shoes or coat, etc. in their society? And how do they manage the problem of the lazy members of any group? Interesting perspective. Yeah, it's a personification. Okay. Um, Penny, I've, I've, I've made a note that we're going to talk about that also on the next webinar, a day 
in the life of an A. Now, I can only base this on my experience with them, but I have to tell you, I was never with just one person during the entire day. And the reason for that is that one single day for them is the equivalent of 33 days here. Okay? I needed to take a lot of naps. So there was a lot I missed in one day. Okay? Um, in fact, I wasn't even awake <laughs> for, for probably an hour of their day um, because I come from a different physicality where the time structure is completely different. But I will share with you what I, I did see, and I didn't see anyone lazy. Um, you know, early in the early years, I referred to them as being very healed race. Um, I didn't choose that word lightly. The reason I say that is that I saw what I did see was that everyone was working towards the whole. Everyone was contributing something, whatever it was that they were doing, to contributing to the whole. Now, nowhere on the mothership, when I, when I was walking down the different corridors or in the park, did I see a little shingle that said cobbler. Okay, I never saw a shoemaker. Um, in, in fact, their uniforms are singular. They, they're a single garment that provides everything that they need. It even repairs itself. Um, the children are taught everything that their parents know that is up to date. Unlike our school system here, where we're feeding them crap that's 30, 40, 50 years old, that school books know isn't right, but they haven't caught up with yet. Okay? The children know exactly as much as the parents know. So the younger generations are already caught up to the older generations. So there is no loss of knowledge. Okay? That's imperative. This is why I say they're very healed. Their focus is solely in the moment, today, and making sure that the future generations or the generations born with them now are prepared at a moment's notice to move out on their own and to take over. The law of consistency is what they call it. Okay? The law of consistency. Where the race God, you know, sometimes the human language is so limited. I see things and I don't know how to explain them. And I know things and I don't know how to explain them because I can't find the words. But just take a moment and, and I'll find... Well, I, I am, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain this because it's, it's... You know, and this is why it's so important that we have a real, genuine, positive experience with other races so that when they reflect a perspective, we understand why they have that perspective. You know, their, their reality, though there are many similarities, their entire way of viewing the reality is different than ours. They hold a different perspective. And of course, perspectives are always very good to get because it helps you see more of the whole.
you know, let's let's come back to that. Maybe somebody else will come up with another question. I don't want to sit here trying to figure that out. And it's the, and it's fa a fantastic, daylight. fantastic question. Okay, so uh, from a day in the life of an Andromedan to uh, a day in the life of the everyday uh, military telepathy, um, Matilda O'Donnell McEnroy, who spoke to a being known as Arrol, I think, Arrol or something. Um, who was a sort of grey, um, uh, or someone in a grey suit. Um, do you, uh, can you say anything about the interview? Uh, I don't know anything so, about the interview. This is from uh, 1947. They captured a grey uh, from there, and, and they interviewed it. And uh, Are you talking about the, about the alien interview? Yeah, uh, I, but also the, um, the, the transcript that was published by this woman who claimed to be the translator, the nurse who translated all this. You've not heard of that? Okay. Let's move on. Okay, this is from Jeff Montejo or Montijo. Uh, no, I, I, I have heard of that. Oh, I, I have heard of that. Okay, um, okay. Um, I honestly don't know how real it is. Okay, um, I believe the actual writer has actually said that it was a work of fiction. So... You'd have to ask him. But he's on the record of saying it's a work of fiction. Yeah. That's sometimes okay. what happens. You have to have that as a work of fiction sometimes if somebody tells you something. Um, okay, so this is from, from Jeff. Uh, Alex, what's your take on the recent announcement by the mainstream media about the possibility of superstructures around some planets in another system far, far away? You, have you heard about this? This is like a big. Kind well, of, I, I, uh, well, I, 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 I'm not surprised, and and of course there are. I don't know what, why you. Well, we're calling it superstructure because it's something that's unknown to us. Um, but it shouldn't surprise anyone uh, uh, about the advanced technology that exists. Um, my only question is: is the frequency? Where's the frequency coming from, from this alleged star? Is it fourth density, fifth density, sixth density? That's the question for me. It isn't the structure. I want to know about the harmonic, the frequency that's coming out of it. Just like our sun, okay? It is being fed by energy from fifth density. Our sun is an extension of a fifth density star. There you go, okay? It is not a self-supplying generator, okay? It is receiving energy from a higher dimension. End of story, okay? It's electrical. That source is from a higher dimension. So, um, and I think it's another way of the mainstream having to leak information about the fact that we're not alone. They just don't know how to come right out and say it, because to come right out and say it, they lose whatever little credibility they've had. They have left, you know, because they have run shotgun over everybody. They have lied and manipulated with the best of them, and they know it. And they know at some point they're going to get caught. So, because you know they've they've betrayed humanity, they betrayed humanity for a paycheck, and they're going to have to answer for it at some point. And that's just what it is. Next question. From Maya, why, we, why do we never see alien underground bases? I mean, I fly by a plane, drive highways all across the U.S., never see anything strange. Because they're hidden, maybe. Because you're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you're not supposed to. I mean, what do you, what do you want to do? Put, in, put lights at Vegas, alien base ahead 10 miles? They're not going to do that. I mean, all of this was done in secret. Um, the, the, the intention and the purpose was to keep humanity in the dark. Um, and that's exactly what they've done. And they've done it masterfully. So, but I've told you where to look. Exactly. I've told you where to look. Okay. Anthony, 
says, hi, what is the Andromedan perspective on the black slave trade and the recent unrest in Ferguson, Missouri and Baltimore unrest? Yes, race relations and the A's. Well, the slave, the idea of slavery is not singularly an earth historical event. Slavery has gone on throughout many galaxies where you have had tyrannical races suppressing less evolved races, using them as slave labor, as a food source, as a breeding source, and, uh, and for experimentation purposes. And it hasn't only been sentient beings, it's also been other type of life sources. The only way that I can wrap my head around it, and, and I'll get specifically to the A's position on this, is that it's part of learning empathy. It's part of, of, a, of a path of wanting to know what it's like to experience this. I do know that, and the A's have stressed this over and over again, that when a negative field becomes too strong, that it throws everything completely out of balance, that steps are taken to eradicate it. And that is precisely what is happening now. Not necessarily um, in the whole galaxy, but certainly, let's see, that would be the definition of tyranny to them. The A's perspective on slavery, and it's actually quite simple, anyone who is not able to defend themselves would be considered a slave. It's very simple. And that goes across the board. Um, that frequency of tyranny, of creating slaves of people, many completely unknowing that they are slaves, but have no ability to defend themselves from tyranny um, in whatever form that looks like. And on the different dimensions it would look, it would be different, okay? Whether it's a spiritual tyranny, a physical tyranny, military tyranny, um, religious tyranny, they're all essentially the same. You cannot defend yourself from it because in so doing um, you'll be eliminated or executed. Um, that is being eradicated because one of the reasons the A's were brought to this particular part of our, to our solar system is because tyranny showed up in their future an imbalance was created and this is what brought them and others to this time and place to eradicate that from ever happening um, because that had happened once before during the Orion Wars and it was horrible what it did to the to the uh, to the galaxy was horrible and no one wants to experience that again that's what I got Next question. Thank you. Have the Andromedans discussed with you, this is from Tobias, have the Andromedans discussed with you how their civilization were, or was, before they started to rise into the higher dimension? So yeah, what was their pre-ascension evolution like? I don't know that information. I do not have that information. Okay. This is from Tanya. When you say plasma field, does this have to do with the photon belt? You know, they've never used the word photon. They have always said plasma field. Um, so I don't know if we're talking about one and the same thing. Mm -hmm. Thanks. This is from Beth. Hello, Alex. Over the past three years, I've been visited regularly by UFOs. 
On occasion, I have been able to summon them as well. My question is, how do I know if these beings in these UFOs are the good aliens or hostile aliens? As I have never seen the beings, as far as I know or can remember. How do you feel? How do you feel? If you're calling them forth, you are on, on more than one level communicating with them. How do you feel? Only you can answer that. Got one more, JP? Yep. Uh, this is from Irene Carlos. How can we help Earth, Gaia, to heal? By being, being healed ourselves. By you being healed. By me being healed. By us focusing on our own healing. And being a pillar of positive field. You know, the earth also draws energy from the sun. Each one of us is an antenna. And as long as we're positive field, the earth will remain positive field. Okay? So just, you know, be, be a Tesla rod. <laughs> be a Tesla rod for yourself. Uh, be positive, be loving, be empathetic. Um, be spiritually grounded, just, you know, just be healed yourselves. And, and that's the best thing we can do. I mean, we can't heal the earth if we're not healed. You know, the, the level of positive energy that could come through us is only to the level that we ourselves are healed. Now, if we are greatly healed, well, then we can obviously pull more energy through us to give to the earth, uh, as well as ourselves. Okay, the, you know, the, the, it's a symbiotic relationship. There is no walking or getting around that. You know, um, she gives us energy, we give her energy. The idea is to continuously, intentionally create a positive field. Great, excellent question. Excellent answer. Um, right. Uh, wow. Loads of questions. Um, Simon Parks has said that once the Pope gives his speech to the UN pushing Agenda 21, that this is the official beginning of the New World Order. The Andromedans, through you, have said that we would fall under the New World Order, but it would last only eight months. In your opinion, could we be out of this mess by May? Oh, that's so hopeful. Well, if Mr. Parks is correct regarding the timing of the clock, um, then it is possible. If he isn't correct about the timing, and, and you know, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Then I, the answer is I don't know. Um, but I can tell you, and I know this. That there's no way that this uh, this enslavement of Earth is going to happen. Um, they're going to go kicking and screaming. This much is no. Okay. But if it means anything, they're already screaming. Okay. Uh, the kicking should be starting anytime soon now. <laughs> so um, we just need to focus on creating the reality that we want individually and staying in positive field. Okay. Keeping things positive. Okay. That's what we need to do. So re regarding key, keeping positive, uh, the earth moves. Joanne, uh, do you see different... Oh, right. I live, in this, I live in the northeast USA, right on the coastline. Do you feel it would be best choice to move inland somewhere at this time? And, and, you know, I think this goes for all earth change questions. What's, what's your yes. latest? Yes. Um, I have said this publicly before, as late as three or four years ago. And this is my opinion, okay? I, I want to stress this. This is my personal opinion. Yes, I would move 150 miles inland. I would not be on the coastline.
เส้นอะไรงั้น There's some uh, uh, duplicates here. That's why I'm pausing a bit. Alex from Beck. Regarding global politics, the changing world and the Syrian conflict, is Putin for or against the new world order? Is he here to liberate and help people, or he is, is he just another puppet for the establishment? He doesn't act like a puppet. He doesn't act like a puppet. And if you have studied the history of Russia and its people. And you know about the American corporations going into Russia um, after just before World War Two, World War One, and then after World War One, and then the Bolshevik Revolution, and then you look at the Nazis and what the Nazis did, and uh, not only to Russia but to most of Europe, and then at the end of World War Two, how we brought the Nazis here to the United States. Um, and then the Nazis went back out into the world, hiding within international corporations, trying to create monopolies, um, and doing all of this in the name of uh, uh, the United States. Um, he he does not appear to be a friend of the New World Order. Um, in fact. The steps that Russia has taken financially um, to protect itself from the fall of the U.S. dollar would also indicate that um, he is not someone who is uh, greatly supporting the New World Order. Um, in, in fact, you know some of his moves and China's moves and other moves that many other countries are taking. Is in fact ensuring that this new world global threat doesn't happen, or it doesn't take hold and survive. Um, that's what it looks like to me. Thank you. And that is a very thank you, a very good question. Um, this is a, from Lauren. You have said that the Anunnaki made a claim to the Andromedan Council that they should control Earth because most of our genetics come from them. At this stage in the game, does that argument hold any water? Any no. news? New, new news? No, it does. It it doesn't hold any water, and it didn't hold any water. Um, they were one of the last to genetically modify uh, a very large percentage of humanity. Um, but the fact that Uh, other strands of DNA that are also off-world are still fully intact and in fact are being turned on with the rising of the new harmonic, this new positive field uh, from the plasma belt as we pass or as we are passing through the galactic plane. Um, that argument is all but gone. No one's even listening to that argument. Everyone has kind of moved on now to preserving Earth, mm -hmm. preserving humanity, and Um, essentially unlocking, uh, unlocking us from this prism of an illusion that's been created by the uh, Orion Consortium, uh, the Draconian Consortium that's here. That's really the focus. <coughs> They want humanity to control itself and to behave itself. But in order to do that, you know, we need some mentoring. Um, because we're way behind the eight ball, and that is the result of manipulation of other outside groups, and everybody recognizes that. Okay. Okay. So there's another great question. Uh, a reminder. You also said last time we would talk about the origins of the force field around Earth, the grid. <laughs> You remember you said you said the uh, the Andromans used to park in the grid and and uh, ripple it around. Well, they burn holes in it, yeah. And other 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 ships are doing the same thing. And uh, it's obviously collapsing. And uh, because they're having to expend other resources in other areas. And um, you know this is why humanity is waking up um, for this very reason. And um, more and more. Fifth density information, 
upper fourth density information is coming in. Um, there is some speculation that this is why they're trying to, CERN is trying to open up a portal into lower fourth density, is to flood it again with this negative field because all this positive field is coming in from higher levels of, of this higher levels of spiritual information is coming in. Um, and this is why scientists are, are playing in an area that they have no idea what they're really doing. Um, I have no doubt that we're going to evolve and we're going to move into a higher field. Absolutely no doubt whatsoever. It's just getting from where we are now to that place. Okay? because we're still having to deal with many negative entities and, and many fields of negativity that have been created to block positive energy, positive field, spiritual knowledge from coming in. And they are in, the, in, in these, these blocks are, are mainly belief systems that humanity has been fed about itself. Those are the blockages that this higher spiritual knowledge is having to break through, um, such as um, we're a pool of chemicals that was an accident. We are all sinful creatures um, that, you know, if we make a mistake in spiritual evolution, whatever that looks like, we're all going to be damned to hell. And, it, and the list goes on and on and on, that we're not worthy of joy and happiness, that um, you know, we're meant to be financial slaves. These are all belief systems that are like brick walls. They were put there in purpose, okay, in purpose to keep us, um, to keep, a, keep ourselves imprisoned, in self-imprisonment by these archaic belief systems. You know, I've used this analogy, this metaphor once before, and it's about the fisherman, the crab fisherman, who was on a pier and he's catching crabs. And this young boy walks up and he's watching the farmer, uh, watching the fisherman rather, and he's pulling the crabs out of the net and he's putting them in a big bucket. Well, some of the crabs get very close to the top and they're almost about to fall, to get away, get out of the bucket. And the... Um, the young boy says to the fisherman, he goes, sir, he's going to get away. And the fisherman doesn't even look at the boy. He just shakes his head and says, no, they won't. And he goes, well, yeah, he's right there. He goes, no, the others will pull him back. They will pull him back into the bucket. And sure enough, that's what happens. Okay? So people who are in negative field police each other to make sure that no one else gets out of that field. Okay? And, and this is the subtlety of it. We've created this fence ourselves. We've put ourselves in this bucket because we refuse to see ourselves in a different way. And we are stuck in this mindset, or majority of people are stuck in this mindset that this is who they are and this is what it is, when in fact nothing could be further from the truth. Okay, Their reality is this, when it literally could be limitless. The problem is they're not willing to take a risk and let go of the past and start building something that's new, that's freer, that is beyond limits. People are getting there. I'm sure we all know people who 10 years ago were like so close to this and acted like assholes, and now they're they're catching up. They're like asking all the right questions. They're seeing things that are different now. They are uh, they are coming to a perspective about themselves. Some of them are even learning to meditate or are meditating. They're spending time in nature where 10 years ago they couldn't be bothered. We all know people like this. So this is what encourages me to know that the wall is falling and people are getting this information. It is transforming them from the inside. So I know a very positive future awaits humanity. Now whether it's 
whether I'm going to be around to see it or, you know, I don't know. But I know that future generations are, are going to be free of the shit that we've had to deal with and that we're confronting. I feel good knowing that it's our generation now or the generations on earth now that are literally changing changing the position in the field of earth and we are moving in a totally different direction and um, I am incredibly honored to be a part of that of that shift um, and all of you should as well be honored I mean just the fact that you hold the energy of, of light here and you know you do it is more valuable than you know I think we have time for one more question JP before they Throw me out of here. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the, the force field. Um, uh, let's see if we can find a really good one for the end. Yes. How, this is from Luca. How important is humor for the psychological health of the higher human races? Do they need humor like we do on Earth? We need humor. I certainly need humor. Well, I find it invaluable. The ability to look at oneself and find humor is invaluable because it shows that you're both, you know, you're both the observer um, and, and the experiencer. I would be an absolute babbling idiot. I may still be, but at least I can be a funny babbling idiot as opposed to a, uh, a ridiculous babbling idiot. Um, humor is great. Humor uh, not only makes you feel better, it breaks depression, it creates endorphins in the brain, it has a more positive attributes, it creates more positive attributes as well as positive field. Um, than I think almost anything else other than maybe, you know, unadulterated uh, love. Um, humor's right up there in creating a positive field. We all want to laugh. We all want to find joy. Um, you know, for someone who, if you don't have any joy in your life, you can't seem to create it, I would suggest you go out and buy two kittens and put them in the same room and just watch how they behave with each other. Okay, if you want to laugh, you want some joy, go buy a couple of kittens. And uh, that will snap you out of your depression, I, I can assure you. What a lovely thing to end on. <laughs> what the internet's all about, eh, Alex? Kittens. Thank you so much. Um, let's, let's see if we can uh, get you out before, uh, before they kick you out. Uh, uh, that's us, thank you very much. And uh, we... Uh, like to say thank you on behalf of uh, James and myself and that uh, we hope to see you very soon again thank you very much Alex. thanks guys God bless God bless